Hi again, here we are to talk about the uh, JavaScript thing and uh, we're gonna work on our shopping cart here. And what we'd like to do is we're gonna improve on the code for our shopping cart. And I gave some examples um, in the last video of, of you know, potential problems that our shopping cart might have, right? And you know, I kind of illustrated them with these, uh, these lines of code here. I'm gonna delete those right now. And what I was saying was, was that we want to, you know, move the shopping cart code into a, a function where we can, you know, w where it will allow us to um, create public and privately accessible variables and, and, and functions, right? And I gave this example where I have a function here and the, the variables that are declared with the word var inside the function body or the function code block here are going to be private and then the function will pass out an object with methods or properties attached to it and those methods and properties will be our public you know uh, methods and properties sometimes they call that the api right okay and so I, i've left a few things out in that example let's let's do a little more with this i'm just going to do this inside you know html the html script tag right now and then later we'll just delete this and we'll actually apply it to the shopping cart js but this is just going to be a little block of code to give us an idea of of what's going on and how it works right so you know there's one thing with this function here is that um you know this function doesn't do anything <laughs> okay because you know it's just the function definition and and it, you know in order for us to do something with this function we have to actually call on it right we have to execute or invoke the function and as a definition for a function you know it doesn't um, you know it doesn't invoke itself right and javascript has an interesting syntax for this um, you can create self executing functions by doing this now the first thing you need to do is you need to wrap the function in the parentheses so there's an opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis and then you follow it with the parentheses like this. Let me write that again, right? So if I wrote an empty function here, you know, it would look like that. You've got, you've got the keyword function, you've got the, uh, you know, the parentheses and then the curly brackets, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna invoke that function by calling on, you know, or by adding on the parentheses on the end. And, and that's just like this, like if you created a function called foo, and then down here you said foo and you followed it with the parentheses that's the same thing you know as if we had put the parentheses on the end like that right except this function doesn't have a name okay now the thing is if you if you do it this way um, this won't execute the function because JavaScript doesn't, it's something about the syntax here, JavaScript doesn't really recognize this as an expression that can be executed. So what you need to do is you need to wrap this in the parentheses like that. So as soon as we wrap this in the parentheses, then JavaScript sees that as an expression that can be executed. And if it's a function and you put the parentheses on the end, then that says, okay, you know, execute that function, okay? <clears throat> so that's what we're doing up here. You know, it's the same. It looks a little different because there's a bunch of line returns, but essentially, you know, you know, if I was to delete everything there, you know, I've got the same, you know, the same arrangement, right? Parentheses and then the parentheses on the end, okay? And I don't know, I think we're supposed to follow that with a semicolon too, okay? But anyway, so there we go. So now the thing is this function returns a value to us right so that value would be assigned to you know something here but we don't have anything so why don't we make a variable let's call it test and we'll say test equals you know this and what's going to happen is when the code runs when it loads up this script uh, javascript's going to execute this function just immediately and the function will return an object and that object will be put into test Okay, so this object here, and this object has one um, property called public method. Let's change that to, um, let's change that to, you know, uh, uh, count cart. How about that, right? This is kind of an abbreviation of what our real shopping cart is going to do, right? But we're just doing this to illustrate the idea. And, uh, and then down here, you know, if I want to call on count cart, I can call and count cart, and you can see that um, you know brackets is giving me 
you know, the code hints there, it's showing me that this property is available. Notice that it doesn't show me cart, right? So the cart property is not available here, only count cart, right? So I'll do that and then uh, we'll test it, right? Um, maybe I'll put a little message in here, you know, count cart. How about that, right? And that way, when we when we test this, we'll be able to see this message, and we'll know that that's the the same one, right? So, so let's save that, and we'll refresh here, and it says cart is zero, right? So, um, you know, and then if we wanted to add something to the cart, we'll say add item, and again, this is going to be a simplified version. So, why don't we add a new public method? Now we don't have an add item method, so let's add one here. We'll say you know object dot add item equals function and then you know this one will be a simplified version of the cart it'll just include the name so now we'll say okay um, cart <clears throat> dot push this name okay now in this system right and they call this a module okay so this is a this is like a, a programming pattern or a programming you know system that is kind of defined and people understand this well and they use it a lot um, and it, it's called a module so it allows us to create a bunch of code <coughs> where our code is is sort of protected because some of it can be private and some of it can be public right and that's that's the use of this module <coughs> remember in JavaScript all the variables and and function names are all in this public namespace they can be accessed anywhere inside the program and that creates kind of a chaos where you know if you're borrowing code or using code from various places or working on code with with various people you know they might not understand all the names that you've used and then they're making up names and they might use the same name and then you have a have a conflict right if you wrap your code in a module then your your names inside the module are all safe and the only name that we're exposing is is this outside one right just test and then that one's easy to change so if some if a conflict comes up you can just change this name and everything inside here can just stay the same okay um, but you'll see here we're adding a, a public item right uh, this this add item will now be part of our public you know API right and um, you know notice that when this function here wants to access a private um, property or a private method it can just call that by name okay because all of these variables are inside this closure so the the function that contains all of this the outer function is called the closure and it keeps track of these variables and as long as these inner functions here still exist then this outer closure function has to remember these values and make it available to these inner functions okay so even though we can't access them from outside the inner functions can access them so you know when we add an item to the cart and we add a, a foo here right and then I, I test my cart again you can see now it says there's one item in the cart okay um, so there, there's one item now right make that a little bigger right and then if I added another item here like that you know if I test this time now you can see there's two items in the cart so you know we can't you know our code won't allow us to access cart directly we'll try it again you know cart mm, doesn't like that right you know or at least brackets is not giving me the, the code hints right and if I you know if I just put that there and I you know um, test it well actually I guess I got a console log that it's not going to give me an error let's see let's log this right so we'll try and log test cart oh it says undefined right so it says that doesn't exist right I mean but we know it exists because you know we can count it and there's two items there right so that's that's the beauty of this of this system right the module pattern right and that's how we're going to arrange our shopping cart. So we'll do it in the next video. And I hope that that example there kind of illustrates the idea of the module. And I have a couple other videos under my 
um, list of daily JavaScript videos that talk about the module pattern, and you can look at those too if you want some more information. And anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll continue this in the next video.